where we'll be working on an interactive music app with JavaScript and SVG. Music app with JavaScript. Yeah. And I'm joined here with a friend. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, hey, everyone. I'm, uh, I'm Mike. Just uh, here along for the ride. Cool. This Mike. And uh, I do have a little bit of feedback on in the background now that the stream is running. But it's not too bad. All right, so Mike and I want to kind of co-evolve this tool, so we're going to try to program a little bit. Mike has done uh, some work with, what do you mainly use, like modular synthesis? Uh, Java, I've done, what do you I've mainly done use, like modular synthesis? In Java. Uh, Java, I've done, <laughs> yeah, you might have to mute the video when you're talking. I don't know. We'll work out the technical kinks in a, hopefully another time. Or just, this is a first experiment. So, um, as of the last um, session, let me show the goal here. It, uh, one of the ideas, at least, is to make musical relationships visible and interactive, meaning you can uh, directly manipulate the musical, um, the music as if it were a physical object. Um, it's, and so try to take some of the abstraction away um, from the music when we have different projections of the musical tones, like a piano forte or musical notes on a staff, uh, there's a lot of mental effort to just even decode the music as it should be played, let alone discover relationships and possibilities of uh, modulation or um, improvisation, things like that. But there are other um, geometrical forms that music has taken, uh, people have discovered, um, a couple of which I'll show here, you know, the circle of fifths or circle of keys or fourths. Um, I believe the circle of fifths kind of uh, underestimates the power of this tool. It, it's thinking in one directional, it's thinking in a clockwise manner. Uh, the circle of fourths would also be underestimating it as thinking in a, a counterclockwise manner. And really um, what these fifths and fourths unlock when combined with the relative minors uh, as another inward uh, layer is a circle of keys in key relationships. I'm looking for an example here on Wikipedia, some kind of um, free culture uh, example. There may be some on Wikimedia Commons. We'll get, I think we'll take more time to um, to delve into different geometrical representations of music, but just that's the main idea here. Uh, and the, this neo riemannian tonnets is a tone map where you have uh, a tone, which is one vibrating frequency. So here's the note C, and the surrounding C are um, related tones. So if we want to do a C major chord, we would have C, E, and G as the C major triad. And this triangle that it makes can be moved, any uh, can be translated to any other uh, tone, and essentially you have what would be called a modulation. Um, but this also shows uh, ways to translate this um, C major triad into other related um, intervals uh, in the key, so like E minor or A minor in the key of, uh, so the relative minor to C is A. Um, the mode, what would be they called, the C Ionian and A Aeolian mode are here because they're, they're juxtaposed. And at, from a theoretical standpoint, this is good because it helps you understand it, but also from an intuitive uh, standpoint, we want to hear it and, and experience that. Uh, so I'll just show another example of an existing project that lets you hear the tonnets. When I press on the keyboard, the computer keyboard, uh, it should be uh, making a tone here. Let me just get my computer audio volume set up so that we're playing tones through my speakers. Uh, it's not working advanced.
Testing one, two, three. Okay, well this one, the sound is not actually working from this side. Strangely enough, it's working on, on my side. Uh, the main thing here is you should be able to, to experience the meaning of these shapes and hear the relationships because it's inherently, that's the purpose of music. It's uh, for us to have an intuition of these vibrational relationships. So in the previous session, I'll go over the code real quick. Mike, so you're on board, but um, rather than going for a full out tonnets, I wanted to get the basic mechanics of how um, to make an interactive SVG that when you press, uh, when you touch it, essentially it should be able to run on a mobile phone and not have a computer keyboard. Uh, it plays a tone. Or a chord, which is the relationship of all these tones. Mike, are you still there? Still with me? Yeah, I'm still here. I just switched over to headphones, so don't get crazy feedback. Ah, oh, perfect. Yeah, then you can leave your mic unmuted, uh, so you can just talk freely and not have to worry about toggling anything. Yeah, as long as it's not too noisy. Yeah. Really yeah, it's cool. So, what what are you thinking so far, based on this overview? Uh, can you go back to the? The grid view. The tonnets, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering, like, uh, so you're look, looking at the blue triangle yeah. versus the red triangle. Is there the fact that they're like face uh, different directions? Does that have any like meaning, musical meaning, or? Yeah. And in, in this dialogue, we'll get to kind of explore uh, into the heart of some of the basic music theory. I'm not super advanced in it, but the meaning here for the downward triangle is what's called a major. Uh -huh. Yeah, and so at a basic level, we associate those with emotional states, cool. happiness and sadness. Underneath that, um, it's about intervals. Um, essentially, I don't think the intervals are listed here, but from C to E is a major third. Uh, so th that interval of the third in a chord in a triad or in a scale the third is what gives the the scale its um sort of emotion so c to a is also a third uh diagonal to right is a major third c to a is a sixth so let's let's look at the because a, a, a C, D, E, F, G, A, so that's six letters. It means it's the sixth uh, interval in the key of C. Um, so the, really basically, I'm sorry, I'm going back to here. So we have C, um, the circle of fifths is easier here. Uh, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sorry, I have a little bit of difficulty. I don't have the... Let me try to stick to Wikipedia also. Major and minor. So yeah, any any scale is it consists of tones and intervals between those tones. And if you there are patterns of whole and half steps, typically, but there's um, some scales that have larger intervals in there. And so if we start on the tonic and we move up a whole step, we have the second interval. Uh, another whole step is the third interval. A ha half step is the fourth interval. Whole, whole, whole. Fifth, sixth, seventh, and then half to get back full circle, full spiral. Because um, in pure um, tunings, this is actually a spiral. Then never really closes itself but with regular pianos we have what's called a tempered um, tuning system that does resolve itself and so lends itself to pure um, pure geometric forms so yeah back to this tonics the a here is a the sixth i think it's it would be called i don't know if it's called a 
it's not perfect. Let me see if they have, somehow my browser went really big. They have a name for it, but yeah, we just have to know it's the sixth interval. C major scale. Another word for it is submediant. But the cool thing is with this geometrical forms, we don't have to get too deep into it and we'll be guided and that the knowledge of the theory will actually un, uh, it'll reveal itself when the time is right. I think a lot of times we have to put emphasis on, you know, sight reading and learning pianoforte and starting to learn theory uh, before it's really relevant to our musical like development. Mm. So with that star image, yeah, what what sort of <laughs> notes is that based on? This is the based on the key of C, C, E, G, uh, C, D. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Uh, so it's all in the key of C. It's a um, I think it's a major seven chord. So here's the major triad. Here's what the C, D, E, F, G, C. So that's a third, fifth, seventh. And this would be out of the octave would be a nine, but it's actually between C and E, so that this is the D. I don't have labels on these, it would make it easier. So I can show this inspector, the interface here. And uh, this is basically where you could come in and uh, help because you don't have to do the code. Let me know if you can see Inkscape here on top. Can you see this Inkscape? Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. And somehow I was able to get to view. One second, I got to find how I got to the source view. Edit, XML editor, here we go. Okay, on the right-hand side, you see this XML. So the, from a user interface design perspective, I, I went with um, the SVG standard because there's a lot of tools that work with it, including I think Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator. Yeah. And it's a web standard, but uh, which means it can hook, I can hook into it from other languages. And when I was trying to think of like how to present a user interface that where the metaphor for these design frameworks uh, is around like buttons and tabs and stuff, but we're using arbitrary geometric shapes, circles, stars, triangles, um, where a triangle has a bounding box, like this star has a rectangular bounding box. And I want the interaction to be just when a user touches the star because hypothetically I could have these, you know, shapes nestled here and when, when I, when I click on this circle, I just want it to play a tone. I don't want it to also play the chord. Right. So traditional user interface uh, libraries aren't oriented towards that. And in order to do to to do that, you have to manually um, write code that looks for the intersection of geometries and, and the touch event and stuff like that. And I didn't want to even get to that level of abstraction. Whereas. Mm -hmm. SVG lets you attach events, or more specifically JavaScript, lets you attach events to DOM, document object model um, elements, so that when I touch the actual SVG element, and not within the bounding box, but the actual element, it'll trigger event. And mm -hmm. all I do here is just name these um, with their musical um, 
data. So each of these circles is a class of note. I'm sorry, I scaled one by accident. Anyway, and the value is the name of the note. So this is an E, this is a C, this is a G, this is a B, and this is a D. And this star is the class chord because it's multiple notes. And the data are the notes and the octave in which they are represented because the musical instrument spans multiple octaves. So this is the note of C, D, E, G, and B in the fourth octave. And if I wanted to make, yeah, so that's all. So the fun part is just making the user interface and then I can get in here and edit the metadata, the attributes to actually attach some musical data. And I'll show you how that happens real quick. So the metadata is inside the SVG. Yeah, because SVG is just based on XML, uh, extensible markup language. So you can just put any type of attributes inside there. And it has a both, you know, XML, uh, sorry, HTML and SVG are based on XML. And they have these data attributes, which is just arbitrary data dash something. You know, you could say data dash, music data dash, notes. And uh, the value here you can then access from code. So this is a custom prefix. A data dash prefix can be anything. Data dash popcorn, data dash favorite food. And then it has a value associated with it. So it's a way you can embed data within a document. Uh, the other way to... Have you, have you uh, thought about like overall like layout? Not really, because um, I think just in the back of my mind, I think it's going to have multiple interfaces. So some way the user should be able to navigate, you know, between these these rep these musical representations, these musical spaces, whether they're looking at a tonnets uh, representation or you know, it could be a MIDI sequence, and there could be a MIDI sequence above the tonnets that you as you play with the tonnets, it's recording MIDI notes. Uh, it could be that there's a circle of keys or fifths or fourths, and as you play that, it records MIDI notes. So yeah, there's a lot of possibilities. It's very divergent right now. I haven't thought deeply about it. Uh, mainly, I'm just trying to get figure out how the code works. Yeah. And I think I got pretty good enough prog uh, progress with that, where now we can start experimenting with the UI. And I could just spin through the code real quick. I just want to uh, briefly mention, though, there's many probably approaches to the, how the tech comes together. And you mentioned earlier having worked uh, with processing. Mm -hmm. And I did briefly consider using processing but, or similar ways of generating interfaces, but they have some shortcomings that you have to think very um, precisely about the layout mathematically, you know, how the pixel orientation of various elements whereas an SVG editor just lets you put in a circle there and move it mm. right so it's just really straightforward I can have direct manipulation is the the sort of paradigm here where you you directly interact with the thing rather than abstractly interact with it similarly with music I want to directly manipulate the notes and hear them or the chords and hear it as I touch it making it less abstract. So I'm trying to keep both the developer experience and the musician's experience uh, along those lines. And uh, there's a lot of interesting people who've uh, spoke about direct manipulation. Alan Kay uh, is a pioneer in education and com computation. Uh, he more or less was one of the people who invented object-oriented programming. Um, Let's see if it mentions direct manipulation here. No. And then there's, um, you know, he's done a lot of research in user uh, experience and user interface design and how to make comp uh, computer systems that are interactive at a fundamental level. Like every element on the screen is something you can just change to you know, you can look at how it works and, and change it. So we don't, uh, he's like a pretty interesting guy. And then um, 
what's his name, Worry Dream, Brett Victor. Um, has done some really interesting presentations about interactive um, computing environments. Even even uh, to this, he started a, a lab where they're creating physical computing interfaces where you you manipulate things in your in your on your desk like physical objects in order to um, to start thinking. It's called Dynamic Land. Uh, so yeah, these are the kind of people I'm taking inspiration from here. I can post them in the chat. If you want to check out more, check out uh, if you have time to watch a couple of Brett Victor's presentations on the showreel. Uh, really good work. Uh, very inspiring. And maybe not directly um, talking about music or music theory or anything like that, but certainly about interaction and, com you know, computer computational thinking. And thinking the unthinkable was one of the presentations he made about how computing technology can help us have ideas that are not possible um, with current metaphors and, um, you know, static um, presentations and, and static web pages and things that the actual medium should be fundamentally interactive and let us explore the concept. It's pretty good stuff. No, so I'm, Back to the music, I think we really could do a lot to help people expand our musical horizons with better interface design. You know, and VCV Rack sort of is a step in that direction with a lot. Some of these modules that are coming out are really creative and just like off the charts. You're mentioning yeah. that one to create chord progressions. And maybe we can somehow render this into a VCV rack module. I don't know. That would be kind of a, a challenge we could try. So let's take a quick look at the code. But yeah, so um, I don't want to generate the user interface programmatically unless we really find there's a lot of value there. So I don't really want to write processing style code to generate these circles and attach listeners to them. Um, and essentially, the SVG we create, we're embedding it in an iframe. So any of the user interfaces can be SVGs. And in order to page through them, it's pretty straightforward stuff. We can just have um, multiple HTML files and a navigation menu. I mean, we don't have to go too advanced here. Uh, but there's also, with JavaScript, you can make you know, a native feeling app where you swipe between pages. Um, So this is all just HTML and CSS. Have you dabbled with HTML in web development much? No, not really. I mean, I've looked at it a little bit when yeah. I've had to, but... Yeah, that's cool. It's basically one of the best ways to learn programming and computational thinking because it's ubiquitous uh, and it actually has some really redeeming aspects um, that you have basically a declarative style language that you just say how I want my room to be decorated and it does it. You also have a declarative structural language. You say, here are the elements on my page and in what order they should appear and style them as such. So you don't have to like in processing, you don't say create a circle and then move it here. You just sort of do that more, which is imperative instructional development. You, you have a declarative language. Then when you need imperative stuff, when you need to tell the computer how to crawl and then how to walk, you have JavaScript. So th these three languages together actually are very powerful and I haven't seen much in, um, in our other user interface um, programming paradigms that approaches this level of like everybody can start doing web development. It's like accessibility. Like. Mm -hmm. JavaScript is relatively easy to learn too. So let's take a look. Basically, so you create variables. I got um, how much JavaScript have you seen or? Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fairly familiar with JavaScript because uh, process, uh, there's like three different modes in processing. One is Java, 
JavaScript and Python. And I've, like a lot of the tutorials that I've gone through have been written in JavaScript, even though I was, I was coding in Java. Very cool. All right, yeah, and there, there's enough similarities in even Python that, you know, you just have different um, uses of like semicolons and stuff. All right, so we're just creating a polysynth here. And this um, is coming out of this Tone.js library. And it also mm -hmm. has a user interface library. So there might be some ready-made user interface widgets like sliders or piano keyboard or things like that. Because if I look at the Tone.js website, um, that under their examples section, they do have some quite a lot that this library can do. Everything from creating no, you know, sounds, oscillators, noise, uh, playing, I think, Og Vorbis or wave files, recording from the microphone and mixing the sounds together, uh, generating sounds with different oscillators and synthesizers, applying basic effects, and sequencing things together, including quantizing raw signals, I suppose. Can you hear those? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and so all these examples are working, and then let me know if the sounds are too loud. I can also turn that down on the stream. Cool. Yeah, so if you have some interest in, in checking do the docs and doing some of the um, JavaScript, that would be helpful too. And this code is open source on GitHub. So this polysynth is what uh, lets us make these notes. And we're, here we're creating four instances of a tone synth. We're like sending it to the master output, master mixer. And then we're getting a reference to this, um, to this SVG itself. Why are you making, why are you making four? Uh, that was from the, documentation i didn't realize i thought it was going to give me polyphony i thought it was let, going to let it play uh, four notes at the same time you know i was trying to construct a chord uh, yeah. um so chalk it up to inexperience i didn't really quite understand what that was doing but i believe having well you maybe it is that you need for you know multiple instances as many instances as the the level of polyphony you need right that makes sense. yeah i could be wrong there uh, and so cool, we grab, we just grab this, you know, reference to this SVG, which I'm calling Tonitz because I originally was actually starting to make a Tonitz uh, SVG, but I changed it to a star in any case. Um, and then in JavaScript and probably in Java, you have um, an event uh, oriented paradigm that you can hook into actions that occur in the user interface layer or other uh, other types of actions but uh, like listen for them and then yeah, trigger functions mouse exactly keyboard action. right so I just wrote this single catch-all function let me double check here Yeah, we just basically get a a reference within the within the iframe. So this gets a reference to the iframe, and this grabs the SVG inside of it. So this took a while to figure out esoteric stuff, but now we're sort of esoteric. But in any case, now we have a reference there, and I can pass it into other event handling functions. So. I created separate functions for the notes and the chord sounds just to try to keep things a little bit organized. And from here, this is pretty standard stuff. You're just getting all the elements that have a certain class. So uh -huh. if, I, if I hover over this, you can see this has got a class of note. So this gets me all the notes. And for each of them, I just attach mouse up and mouse down events to play a note. And that, uh, did I get all the, is there like multiple notes? Yeah, that's the cool thing about it is with just this one 
query selector all, this is my query. I'm asking for this dot means no, uh, class. So I'm asking for all of the pay, all of the you know things within this SVG that are that have the class dot note. Yeah. So we could put hundreds of these in there, and this will do the, grab them all with one line of code. And then that's why, you know, because you don't really, we're trying to save our time. I don't want to individually, you know, this might sound obvious, but I don't want to individually oh, I'm sorry. say, yeah, exactly. Um, so that's actually pretty smooth. There's maybe even a more, it's still a little bit imperative because now I have to say, now do something with each of those. There might even be a more, a higher level way of doing it, but this is the way I was able to work it out. And basically, like you mentioned earlier, the mouse up and mouse down events are what we're targeting here. I haven't tried this on a mobile phone or anything to see if these will catch the touch events. But what this does is since I've got two distinct events, I have an envelope of attack, like basically the attack and the uh, release. What do they call those? In any case, um, so on, off on off so it means you can play this note or chord as long as you want we haven't yet attached the, the action to the, the SVG exactly that's what I'm doing right here I'm adding event listener now and um, on these events i have just organizing my code into smaller functions so that it's easier to reason about when, when oh, I yeah. When I press the mouse down, I want to play a note. When I let go of the mouse, I want to stop the note. Uh, and that way you don't really, if you want, have to read any further than this and you understand the code. But if you want to say, okay, well then how, you know, what's going on inside the play note? And actually I should be, to be honest, my code shouldn't have these function de declarations inside of the function, what they're called. These functions should be out here. Because the whole purpose of abstracting uh, this code out of the function was so that I don't have to think about it. In, when I'm reading attached note sounds, I don't have to think about what these functions are doing. Mm. So that's just a simple mistake I made. Similar, let me just get these up. So I'll bring them to the top level. So that was, didn't fundamentally change how it worked. It just made it easier for us to read and reason about. Cool. Function should be really small, only a few lines, so that way you don't have to think too hard when you're reading it. Yeah, so here's actually where how the note's being played. Remember I mentioned that in the SVG we have these data dash um, attributes. Yeah. So when I, I called data dash notes, I, I made it plural for consistency. Even though this is just a note, a single note, uh, I added a data attribute called notes. And then inside of that notes is just the note name or multiple note names if it's a chord. And the, we can figure out the notation, but I'm following the notation that tone.js uses. Because like we'll have to think about how you signify a, like a, a sharp or flat, for example. Mm -hmm. And if we, if there's a way to actually designate this as a C, uh, well, this is a C nine chord, I think, or it's just because uh, it's got one three five seven. And if I move this to the fifth octave, and I save it. Set that, and I save the SVG, and I reload this. It didn't take. And in any case, um, you know, there might be a, the point is that there might be a way to just say this is a C9 chord instead of de defining all the notes.
Okay, so really quickly, and then that this way we can start to maybe come up with some ideas. But so the play note it just grabs that notes data and triggers an attack or release depending if we're clicking or releasing, and you have to specify the note. So I could, for example, change this to C4, and then change this to C4, and then when I reload. They're all now C4 because I've hard coded it. But I didn't want to hard code it. So I'm actually using JavaScript to say, get me what's inside of the notes for this one and just call it note. And then we'll play that note. And I'm specifying the octave. Why not, uh, why not just declare like what the That's good. One second. Sorry. Um, hey, level two. I just noticed you're in the chat. Sorry for um, I didn't have that chat tab open. If you're there, still there, sorry for the delay in responding. Uh, let me just double check. Level two helped me with this code like very substantially in the previous. Um, and they're wondering if I'm referring to processing JS. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> level two, I was uh, actually giving you props for helping me out. Looks like level two may or may not still be viewing. Uh, go ahead, Mike. Can you repeat that idea? Because it might be a good improvement to the code, and I can probably make that make that change. So you're asking uh, what, so why do I embed it? Instead of embedding the note data in the SVG, yeah, uh, just declaring by, uh, for example, declaring classes in the beginning of the code and assigning like note data to them so you already have this like musical structure written in the code and then that yeah. way when you when you make an SVG uh, you, you can just make the shapes you want and use it universally like with any chord with any with any note uh, maybe you have, you have to like write it into functions later somehow but that makes sense you're, in, you're like pulling kind of a pool, pool, a pool of data instead of the yeah, I guess, but I would still have to have some way of referring. So, like, let's say I had a class called Star. Well, yeah, just hypothetically. And the Star class has the notes uh, as a list, like... Uh, I'm not sure how to d define a class. I'm thinking, like, so the class would be Star... Yeah. It would take, it would take um, the input would be like you have to you have to with, with the like, uh, it would take input of what chord that star is and then it would automatically assign the, the correct notes to the, the ring of the star. Yeah. The thing is we would just didn't have to create an instance of a star SVG and render it so we could attach the correct notes to the correct SVG. Right. And we would be back in the land of processing right. where we're doing things code first in a code driven way. Um, but then we lose the ability to do things in a handcrafted way with the user interface. Mm -hmm. And you have to have some reference in, in the handcrafted SVG to say, yo, grab me that red star versus the blue star, or grabbing the C major star versus the C minor star. Right. So we'll have to have some metadata in there. And it could be that, whoops, sorry, we shortened the, uh, the metadata to use the chord name or something. But the same thing would apply because not only can we tell Tone.js to play a series of notes together as a chord, which I do here, I, you can trigger attack from multiple notes. I think it'll actually just play a named chord and it'll play the correct notes there. Um, uh, so it's a little bit, sorry, dovetailing off what you're saying, but I don't know of a way to clean. Uh, level two, let me know if you have any ideas about what Mike is saying, because, um, you know, I would like to, 
I think with the general spirit of what you're saying, Mike, is that we should try to decouple it as much as possible and have maybe most of the explicit stuff in the, have the code be more explicit about right. the tones and stuff. So you don't have to make a, a bunch of uh, separate SVGs for Right. Important. Yeah, and then for every SVG element, you have to go in there and edit the tone, the metadata and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, all right, well, we might figure something out. I can see how that would be a little bit tedious. Uh, but so far it's working. Um, and it might just be like the way of the gun to en enable us to have, to directly manipulate the user interface in the design process. We might just need to embed some references, if not the actual core data in the FD SVG. Let me just see if there's like a, yeah. Yeah, it looks like um, this synthesizer, it just wants note names and dura durations. Frequencies. Cool. And level two, I didn't also mean to assume that you're a guy. I think I just said a person who has been helping out because uh, basically I was just trying to give attribution a little bit, but my brother hadn't met you. Or Mike hadn't met you. So I think though, in this case with um, tone jazz, we might need a higher level music theory library that would allow us to get chord information so tone information from a chord, a named chord, that might give us a little bit higher level of abstraction. I did a little preliminary research on this. One moment, I just got a text message. One of the cool things is that you get to offset these notes so that it'll do it uh, maybe in somehow conjunction with the, the clock rather than right away. So it'll sort of hopefully quantize, hmm, but I don't know if this will actually quantize you to the clock grid. But let me just check if there's a um, JavaScript music theory library we could get that can do some of the abstraction for us. As you can see, I was searching for this before, and I did find this Theoria JS that hasn't seen much, much uh, TLC recently, but it lets us have higher abstractions like intervals, which is the space between notes. It'll even uh, give us whole scales, a list, and these notes, I believe this notation is shared by Tone.js. And then we could get the chords right there, a named chord. So this actually is probably a good abstraction. And then what, oh, let me think. What I believe it would allow us to do is have less of the metadata embedded in the SVG. The problem is, hmm, we'd have to know the names of all these chords. So this is D minor. Oh, sorry, sorry. This is C major, A minor. So I think that would work. 
if I say, starting from the note of A, give us the minor chord. Hmm. And that should return a list of notes with the proper ones, which can be then sent into the trigger attack and trigger release functions. Hmm. Okay, well, let's see if this works. Let me, uh, I'll be right back and we'll continue the coding in a moment. Okay, let me just take one quick look at these other libraries. Tonal sounds good. Functional music theory library, I think it's TypeScript oriented. Or very, had, had very limited documentation. Teor Teoria. Based on sort of what you're saying, I realized that um, this t tone JS only lets us, I guess, hence the name, only lets us spe specify a specific tone. Uh, so not a chord. It's not going to give us higher level abstractions, th theoretical music, theoretical abstractions like what is an interval, what is a chord. So we probably need to find um, something that will give us those abstractions and. I think there's some good things in uh, Python, but uh, we're not really I'm ready to. That's true, but I'd, again, rather if the I'd rather use a library than write a library. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's take a look at a couple of libraries at a couple of libraries and see which one um, kind of suits our fancy. And uh, so this one hasn't been updated since 2017, but that might not be a big deal. It looks like I can just include it pretty straightforward. I, I don't want to, I don't mind using NPM, but I'm trying to keep our development process really, like really simple. So if I can just download the JS for now. The cool thing about it is it lets us specify a tone. And it uses, I think, several types of notation. This scientific notation might be what tone.js is also, or yeah, tone.js is also using. And then gives us abstractions for intervals and scales, which is kind of cool. The major scale, for example, and relative minor. And actually, this uh, is cool because the Dorian, Ionian, and Mixolydian are the sources of the seventh chords. So those would be useful when we start going up the. Oh, yeah, this I refactored up the octave and trying to produce harmonious extended chords. And, but finally, what's good is we can actually just specify a chord by name. And I think that'll give us the tones as a list, a JavaScript list, which can just be passed right into um, to this trigger attack function. This is just a list of one or more tones. So we started a note, we specify a chord, and hopefully we can get it to list. Uh, 
What do you think? You, have you worked with um, different musical programming languages? Uh, no. Yeah, you, or you were, okay, so the live coding wasn't um, theory oriented, it was maybe like generators, musical generators? Oh no, I was, I was doing even processing actually. Oh, okay. So just like visual? Visual, visual. Let's see if this works. It's not super well documented, but I guess it's, I shouldn't be complaining too much. Let me just keep an eye on level two in the chat. And you can mix and match libraries, level two says. Yeah, that makes sense. Level two, have you seen any other good music theory libraries? So let's see if they have a dist folder. The reason I'm trying to avoid it in PM is so that I don't have to use a build tool to to run this. And I'm not sure how I would include an NPM script in just a static HTML page. this whole thing there. Level two, do you know how I could hand, uh, handle that, including an NPM? Node modules. build framework. All right, let's just try extracting this. So now I've got a lib folder with Teoria.js. And that should give us everything by including that lib Teoria 2.2.0. Two says you can really use npm to help manage your code base and still access your app by going to the file in the browsers or set up a simple web server to serve it to you that makes sense i'm hoping this thing i can just deploy it to github pages though and um, without having to do any much like building or transpiling or anything like that so i'm really trying to be a little bit I guess you'd say old school here, or naive, I suppose. All right, so let's see what we've got here. major nine. So that's essentially what we're doing here with this chord. It's a major nine, I believe.
let's just take a look at uh, so level two says yes all simple unless you want to do a compile or something like that node.js is just js on the server so you can still go old school with that too with node.js yeah it makes sense uh, this is a client app i will keep node.js in mind i'm not opposed to it but so far we're doing everything just in the browser all right let me just think here so now if i just uh, refresh this i should have a a debugger when I click play chord. Hmm. What am I doing wrong here? Mike, do you have any ideas for the UI, how I can change that? Let's see if he's here. Oh, console, uncaught reference here. Uh, okay, so here's the problem. Change it now? Well, yeah, if you have anything, if you want to um, work on the SVG or anything, that's cool. If we And then you can send it to me. I can I can update it into the UI. Do you want to try that or do you want to just uh, suggest stuff and I can also improve that? Yeah, I'm thinking... Um Yeah, because this star is just a way of testing the code out. So, yeah, if you have any kind of sketches or mocking tools, uh, I can take that and actually start making it into code. But if you want to experiment with that. Yeah. How would you want to transition to a Different form? Yeah, different form. Yeah, that's a good point. I was thinking the, um, that's why the tonnet is actually pretty good uh, because the chords are these, at least the triads are all here and you just play play a triad. So maybe actually, yeah, if you, could you think, do you think you could uh, mock up an SVG tonnet? You might even be able to use this. Let me just see the format here. Make sure if we're using anything, it's like Creative Commons licensed. Here's sulfagetonnets.svg. Well, that's kind of cool. Uh, level two says, what do you want for the UI? How do you want the GUI to be? What is the vision you see? Multiple dots we can make, uh, unless you want to. The circle one is great. So this circle one here did you mean level two or this circle Ooh, that's that's crazy all right uh, so let's try the circle of keys then yeah, yeah there's a, so this is what's cool about this idea is once we've got the basic coding wired up uh, there's some really cool things we can try so yeah, Mike, uh, level two um, is suggesting these circles and I'll send them the link. Mike, do you wanna try, a, do you think we should try a circle of keys then? A circle of fifths? Yeah. Cool, could you mock up uh, an SVG one and then uh, I will do the, the wiring of the thing to a, a named chord, I guess is what we're kind of converging on that uh, we shouldn't have too much metadata, too much data in the SVG, but we have to have something in there. Mm. Yeah. All right, then I have to figure out how to run a Node.js library in the browser.
Oh, I see. I just included the wrong files. Teoria JS. So I think there's others. I think this is the master bundle. And that other stuff I can get. Like I'll have to check this one out. This one looks really promising. It's up to date, but I just can't figure it out. The documentation is so scarce. And they have no documentation. All right, that works. <coughs> Whoops. So I need to see if there's a way I can get these chord tones. From a, a named chord. these intervals are hmm. let's see level two says honestly if you want to just include code as a file that might be easy just like you said old school link to it yeah I'm gonna try that I, I just don't know if we have a good library yet uh, before I figure out the way to link it I can't really understand this. These intervals. Hmm. Alright, so if I collapse this and I simplify this, I just grab a chord from a note. So now be A major 9. We've got intervals, we've got the root, chord. We have voicing, but these are a series of intervals that I just don't quite get. If I can get that chord to a list, notes. 
That's what I'm after. Then we're good to go. And uh, if it's a method, let's see. Here we go. Boy, Kesty. We've got the notes, so that's a good start. Level two says, I downloaded it and opened it in Inkscape. Okay, cool. Level two, were you here for the discussion about how much data we should embed in the SVG versus keeping it separate, somehow uh, keeping the data just in the code? What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Should we just focus on the UI now and figure out the technicalities later? So this is supposed to just... Give me a list of the notes without octaves. So that's another problem. Does not be having how the example works, the JavaScript example works. Level two says, hmm, I mean, regardless of what you do, you have to tie it to a GUI. Even if you ID this circle as a number and tie the number of it, uh, to the notes, which will allow for changing the notes easy since you just tie it to the ID number. The notes uh, are not exactly tied directly into the SVG. Since the circle thing on the wiki is already an SVG that you can manipulate, it could be easier to do either one or both, where you have two separate data IDs. One is data ID number, and the other is data ID note. Yeah, so it sounds like we're not really gonna get around the, uh, the notes thing. And uh, which circle are you working with here? Ooh, these are kind of abstract. I wonder if there's a uh, circle of keys, circle of fifths. The colorful one. Oh yeah, but this doesn't give us. The inner wheel, we need that inner wheel. Hey, what do you think about this colorful one? Or this colorful one. Let's see. What do you think of this one? Is 
Is it SVG? Let's take a look. Where does it say? Ping original file SVG nominally. Yeah, circle fifth SVG. Oh yeah, it says right here. No need. The red one on this screen. This is the one you were working with, the blue and red. Is this the one you mean level two? Yeah. Okay. Uppercase from major, lowercase from minor. Twenty-four triads on the piano keyboard arranged in a circle where the numbers key numbers zero through eleven. Major triads start and end with red keys. Minor triads blue keys. I just don't quite understand this. It's really actually. The duodecimal thing is throwing me off. Cool. Are you back, Mike? Welcome back. Hey. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Cool. Let's see. Something about half hour I need to call it good on this session and go I need to make dinner and then I have another meeting which is cool about some web development but um, we're looking at can you see the stream mic did you dip out or I can't hear you yeah, I'm still here. I see it. okay cool Uh, yeah, we're just looking at different interfaces. What do you got going on? Um, are you mocking something up? I was trying to get into uh, this app called Sketch. Oh, okay. Uh, Have you heard of Inkscape? Oh, no. It might be a good one just to get something rolling. It's uh, particularly since we're using SVG for this, pro for this specific project. I'll send uh, the link in the Jitsi chat, inkscape.org. It's an open source illustration program, pretty powerful. And then that way, and if you are able to do sketch later, it's cool too. As long as it outputs SVG, we're good to go. Yeah. All right, so this, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, level two. So, if you have a particular diagram, um, can you up can you uh, upload it to the Wikimedia Commons and then send me the link to it, and then we'll we'll get some note data attached. If that sounds like a reasonable way of um, collaborating, and same thing, Mike. If you have uh, something ready to go, as you as you're able to figure it out. I'm going to keep working with it. What are we using as what? As a basis of the SVG. Yeah. Uh, if you can have a yeah transparent background, that, that's cool. Um, so just the, all you have to focus on, particularly with Inkscape, is just adding the element. And by default, Inkscape won't have a background. Uh, level two learn says how many notes are there in music in Western music the chromatic scale consists of 12 tones and they just circle around so let's see
So let's see if there's a, the names of the notes are what gets kind of funky. And that's why, honestly, this, these names are already confusing enough. And then to have the duo decimal representation, I guess this is not too bad. But you can see how some names have two names. It's already a weird, weird language music that it is. But uh, let me see. So the the notes names are just basically A B C D E F G, and then they have some sharps, more or less, um, so that you have twelve total notes. Love you says. I see you really like that start. Maybe a star with 12 points, you can click on each uh, circle point to make a note sound, and then certain notes you click on combine to make music. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. So a 12 point star for the whole chromatic scale. See if I can make a 12 pointed star, blue, blue one. And then in Inkscape, how do you change the number of points for the star? Oh, come on. Key, one, delete, star. 12 pointed. Ooh, look at that. That's nice. Um, Love to learn for life says that they've got it. Yeah. Uh, upload the SVG directly to the wiki and link it to me. Yep, exactly. If you can just put on the Wikimedia Commons. That way we uh, we can work with it and other people might be able to riff off of it a little bit and make some cool stuff. This is actually not too bad. If I can download the SVG here. I'm gonna have to change the uh, name of this project on GitHub. Oh, level two learn. Um, the Wikimedia Commons is a um, wiki that you can uh, upload stuff to. Either this or GitHub, but basically just some place that you can um, submit it. This is easier right now during the live stream. If you can just, uh, looks like you have to create an account on the Wikimedia Commons. And uh, it's, it's related to Wikipedia. It's a sister project of Wikipedia. So all these uh, submissions people can use um, for different reasons. Like we can use it for musical software interface. So let me see if I can open as layer. What we'll do is just a, a wonky interface with a bunch of different ideas all smattered in there. And as long as our nomenclature stays the, uh, the same, then we should be uh, with these keys, these um, 
classes of note and chord and then the data keys, we can have all sorts of different user interfaces and just put the notation data in there in the SVG. So now if I hop back over to the code, oh, I'm sorry, you don't have, so here's what I'm doing basically in Inkscape. I just put several um, interfaces in the same document, several different ways of looking at it. I saved that. And as level two, as you create an account and upload that data, the picture, um, then I'll add it to this also. Level two says, what uh, style or theme or color palettes do you see? Um, yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> this is a complete project now. We're ready to ship it. <laughs> you like this? This is a very intuitive interface. <laughs> Whoops, sorry, I hit Inkscape again. Perfect, huh? Looks like almost abstract art. All right, so what did I call this? Several interfaces.svg. Now, if I reload this, ooh, ah, snap. There we go. Now we got everything in here. And look at that, it just worked because I didn't change the semantics. Everything works as we expect. Uh, it's getting a little bit harder to see, so let me change the orientation of the code view. How do I change the... Uh... To dev tools orientation. Gosh darn it. Huh. There we go. Boom. All right, so we got several. I'm pausing debugger. And basically, sorry about that. Okay, there's a little bit of a bug there. So now I have this list. I'll take the debugger off. And I'll pass this A major nine into the trigger tack and trigger release. Just as an experiment, if we can play a named chord instead of notes. No, it's not working. I need a kill switch. I need something to just stop the music. Stop the music. Ah, and then I have to say notes. There we go. So now when I, as soon as I get an A tonic major nine notes, the only problem is this doesn't have the octave information. So that again won't work. Hmm. So I have to loop over those and, and attach the octave. Um, level two learn or level two says, do you don't have discord? No, we don't have that. Um, do you want to, what would we, what would you want us to use discord for level two? And just like how you change the number of points in Inkscape, you can do it programmatically too. All right. Well, that's a good 
point is that um, you know we can be generating all these user interface elements programmatically, but I've been hesitant to do that because I think it puts us all at a lower level of abstraction where we have to think in terms of you know like Cartesian coordinates and, and things like that and other geometrical things like sine functions and whatnot. Whereas Inkscape just lets us point and click. And, you know, granted I have to figure out some, there's some balance of code in the middle, uh, but I don't want to be writing native UI sort of canvas level or processing JS level UI uh, statements. Level two says, put that blue star in the center of the circle. And Discord can be used uh, to post links and notes and simple communications like a chat room log. That makes sense. I guess this um, this room is not going to this uh, Twitch chat is not going to be log keeping a log, is it? Um, well, for now, can you post a link in Twitch chat? I don't have uh, really, I'm not ready to set up a Discord chat right now. Let me go over, back over to Inkscape real quick and move things around and scale it down. That looks pretty tight though. The thing is we don't have 12 here. One, two, three. Yeah, we do. Working. What's that, Mike? Uh, I'm sorry. It's just rotated a bit, a bit weird. Yeah, it's rotated a bit weird. If I do like this, you think it'll line up? You gotta rotate that star a little bit. Yeah, yeah. All right. Close enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True that. All right. Looks good. Boing. How's that look, level two? Oh, I've got two. I didn't even realize that. Ah, oh, I see what happened. Somehow I had duplicated that. All right, now hopping back out of Inkscape. Yeah, refreshing things looks nice. And my debugger, when I look at, on clicking the chord, I should have some chord notes. This A major nine. Level two, what am I looking at here? A bunch of note objects with duration. But the thing I don't get is that I'm supposed to be able to get a list back. Just like a list of the note. Mm, not like that. Note names. Oh, we're looking at now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I haven't. That's another thing I have to fix out. Boom. There we go. <laughs> that's what level two was saying also. I don't have SVG on. I'm using this this music theory library and basically trying to get a dang list of note names. Then I'll loop over that. Simple. Maybe simple is what I'm after. And I'll, I'll loop over this and then attach the um, octave. So when I click on it, ah, uh, there we are. So the simple representation gives me the note names. That's what I'm after. Level two says, and then we would have to make music too. 
Yeah, that's right. So what are the elements of music? Who knows that? You get a cookie, whoever knows the answer there. There's three elements. Harmony. Harmony is one. Rhythm. Rhythm is two. Marijuana. <laughs> there. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you get a marijuana cookie. Soul, says level two. Yeah, nice. <laughs> All right, so we got the list. Now I'll just prepare and play this beautiful chord by adding an octave value to each of those. And is there, a, hey, level two, is there a native map in JavaScript now, ECMAScript, or do I, how do I create a list in, by iterating over another list? Yeah, like, um, well, essentially what I'm after is, um, yeah, for each, and then I can mutate the array in the for each, or do I just... capture the output. I think I've already done this for each. Because I'd like to create an, a new list from a, an existing list or mutate the existing list by adding, um, by concatenating a number to each string. New array equals array. Okay, so basically, let me just show you real quick for clarity. I'm still like in Python. Oh yeah, so I would do array for each and that'll return a list. If I do array for each, it'll return a list. No, yeah, because I want to create a new list from an existing list. So it's essentially a map. I want a map and I don't want to use underscore or low dash, but maybe I'll just use low dash because it has it and it's on CDN. Yeah, I'll just do it, doing it. Mm. Low dash CDN. Yeah, so array.map and that, that'll return a, a new array, right? All right, let me just try it. If I can just uh, use native I'm not sure on uh, how, what the browser support is for the array.map. We just say return note. So I would say f string, format string. Where's my back tick? Back tick. Oh gosh. I'm using a Nordic keyboard. Oh no. There it is. Oh man. I'm not gonna put them all in the same octave. Shift. Back tick. Uh, either one of these I need to do one or the other. All right. Okay, so level two says you take it on a list, you run the dot map function. So I've got I've got a list here of simple tone from a major nine chord. I'm gonna map over them and for each, um, I'm not using the fat arrow function. Does fat arrow work in the browser? Yes, it does. Well, I'll be. Okay, so now I should have notes with octave that is a basically, well, let's just take a look. 
continue. <laughs> All right. Where's my debugger? Oh, I haven't clicked on it. All right, we've got, so we've got the A major nine, the original notes, and then the notes with octave should be, yeah, it works, it works. Brilliant, thanks level two. Your JavaScript skills are invaluable. So now I'm just gonna repeat this up here. What I'm doing is just a quick experiment with a named chord So that gives us a higher level of abstraction. And probably in the next session, we can dig further into some of these user interfaces, how we can map these arrays uh, from SVG to JavaScript, stuff like that. I'm gonna have to start making pizza dinner in about 10 minutes, Lohi Lanku pizza. Okay, so it's not really working though still. Something. Something is not working. One thing I'm doing wrong here is I'm passing in the wrong argument there. So with your trigger attack and trigger release, you have to pass in the exact same list or at least the list elements that you provide will be the ones that are, are released. So if you don't provide the same ones, then it'll keep sounding. There it is. That's pretty sounding. Okay, level two or Mike, name a chord. What would you like to hear? Huh? G. G. Diminished. Diminished. All right. Yes. Yeah. There it is. How's, oh, I'm sorry. This is muted. You can't hear it. There's G, G diminished. <laughs> Give me a hard chord. Is what level two says. A hard one. Well, that's G diminished is pretty, pretty <laughs> constant dissonant. Sorry. All right. So now. What this means is that we can actually take these forms here. These are all major and minor chords on this circle around uh, the outside of our beautiful blue star. And uh, the inner circle is major and the outer circle is minor. And then I can just say, play me D major. So let's see, D major. Ooh. That's interesting. That sounds like a major seventh. Oh, I guess that is major. Brilliant. Okay. So did you did you guys upload anything or I think basically the thing will be to edit this SVG. I can try that in like next couple minutes let's let's see if we can do a quick edit of the svg hmm. where's inkscape inkscape on my desktop all right so first i'm gonna clean up some of this stuff should i keep this star around should is it do we like it the little golden star Alright. And now I need to ungroup this. Control Shift G. And then and then this has labels, so this is nice. Uh hey um level two, does this work if I select multiple items and I can then uh Assign a class simultaneously, or is that assign it as like a big group? Level two says 
put it in another layer for reference. Put what in another layer? The star? All right. I'm not even sure how to do that. How do you do that in SVG? How do you do layers? Oh, no, you can't. You can't edit the metadata for multiple. This is a pain in the butt. I think this is what, Mike, you were talking about. This is going to be a slow process. Dang it. It says you can. Yes, you can. Okay, so if I hit these two together, they go, it grays it out though, right off the bat. How do, what do I hit, Alt? Maybe I should do it. It is frustrating to try to explain it through chat. Okay, cool. So, can you do it while preserving this, the metadata schema? So we need, we need two things to be attached. Each object has to have a class of cord, and then each object has to have a data notes that is the uh, cord name. Yeah, I think I'll just do it tedious, tediously so we can, is it, do you mind if I do it tediously, level two? Yeah, just real quick, just to, I think I'll spin through it. Oh, oh man, I'm already screwing up. Get it. Class cord, class cord. That would be a nice feature request for Inkscape, though. Yeah, each of the sub elements. Yeah, they're all accessible. I can target them individually, or if, since I'm putting the same class on all of them, I, I can tell it to give me all the classes, all the chords, and attach an event listener. So, yeah, with SVG, you have access to the whole uh, DOM tree, the whole document tree. We just have to be a little bit tedious to label everything. Like Compared to. This is where you could. I think this is like where you could uh, make it faster. Like instead of using specific note name, you assign it. No values, that each circle has a value of this, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then, <laughs> and then it has to, kind of How many cookies have you eaten today? None yet. <laughs> Wait, just let me stop, let me slow down, slow you down though. Because um, these aren't these aren't note values. These are chords. That's the main difference. So that's uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mike is my real brother, and I'm not cooking pizza yet. I should be actually cooking pizza really soon. I just want to get uh... Mike. When was the last time we hung out? Uh, uh, 
it's been a while. But then we just dive right back into some wonky music stuff, some crazy. <laughs> I'll have to cook the pizza in just a moment, but I'm gonna get this to work. Okay, so here, here's the, um, here's the rub. I'll give you a couple of examples in the key of C, just to, um, to call it good, and I will complete the, the work offline. But I'm gonna stick with the same recipe, Mike. I hear your reservations about like, uh, the how boring it is to have to enter these repeatedly, and it's error prone. And there might be a better way, but I just don't know it right now. But if we just check it out, data, the notes. Uh, no, actually, in this case, I'll say data dot chord because now these have um, a name, a minor, and as long as I check the docs real quick, so that my naming conventions follow the naming convention of these chords. Oh, crap. I need three net metadata. I need notes and an equality, chord quality. Level two says, what was that page uh, where it should see all those circles? In the comment wiki. That is on the circle of fifths. That's this page here. <laughs> All right, so I need three pieces of metadata that I looked at. I need a tonic and quality. Oh, man. Let's just do it for the key, uh, C major, and you'll, it'll make sense. One moment. Bear with me. I'm on the way, and I am very open to uh, suggestions. So now I've set the tonic for all of them because if you recall the code, it asks for two things. The code asks for a note. So that's this note, which I'm calling tonic because it's essentially it's the basis of the chord. Then it asks for a chord quality. Uh, this could be major, minor, add nine, augmented, diminished, suspended, sus two, sus four, uh, major seven, um, uh, all sorts of good good stuff there. Yep. So that's just called quality, generally speaking. So let me hop back over to Inkscape. We're almost there. And we're just looking at triads here, major, minor, triads. <clears throat> so here I have tonic set for all of my tones, all my chords. And now I need quality. I will copy that. Minor. What do you got cooking, Mike? So capital M is a major, lowercase m is minor, just in case it's not. Uh, Easy to spot the difference between those two. Polynopsic. Try circle of fifths. Yep, that's right. Conventionally, oh, I'm sorry, I missed that level two. Yep, conventionally called circle of fifths. All right, so now I've got chords, minor, A, quality minor, data tonic E, 
data tonic G, data quality, major, tonic C, quality major chord. Ooh, I didn't get anything. Oh, I see. Ah, some of these, I'm clicking the letter instead of the circle. Ah, oh, damn. Well, we'll see how that pans out. What's up, Mike? Uh, he said to like edit multiple things, you know, to group them, so you like select them and, and then do it. Okay, well then though, uh, assign the property to the whole group. That's interesting. I'll have to try that out next time. Yeah, but for like the uh, free major minor. Yeah, that's a great idea. I would. I'll try that right now. In fact. All of these, for example. I'll just try it with two first, because I don't know, like, if you ungroup it, then we'll still All right, Control G. I grouped. See, now I have a group ID G480. I think it's going to assign the, and you can see in the SVG, it's going to assign the property to the whole group and not the members. I, I believe that's not going to work. All right. Unfortunately. And level two says, still not the page he was on that showed a list of circles, and then he asked me which one, and I said the red one. Okay, that was uh, the circle of fifths page. Let me just find that so we can. Um... It was either the tonnets, so T O N N A T Z, this Neo Riemannian tonnets diagram. If you scroll down about halfway, um, level two, there were several diagrams in your. Uh, suggesting I use one of those. The other page is this um, category circle of fifths. So I didn't just do a search. I actually did a search and then went to uh, a category. All right, now we've got this um, SVG saved. Let me just change up the code a little bit when I do the play chord. So we're going to grab uh, all the chords. And attach the less the uh, listener. Attach chord sounds. So find all the thing with chord. Ow. Oh, I think I did that correctly. Let me make sure it's singular. Yes, classes chords. So it's going to find those correctly. And then it's going to. Play chord and stop chord. So inside of here, instead of targeting notes, I will do chord uh, tonic. This is going to break my little star, but um, data set and what do you do? Bracket notation. And for the tonic and then quality. get the metadata back out. All right, now we'll, um, comment that. Let me think here. Tonic, quality, and I get the simple representation of that, and I add the octave, and then I trigger it, and basically do the same for the off, so that we will have silence, there will be silence. So the chord Teoria creates for us from the, using the tonic inequality, then plays. Ah, then I have to fix that. Mapping over the chord notes and adding the octave information. All right, thanks. All right, level two, what are you thinking of that? This 
It's working. It's working, guys. You hear I'm basically playing a diatonic melody in the key of C. This is our tonal center, C major, and I can go one, four, five. The problem here is that um, these letters, it lets me select the letter so it's getting a little bit in the way. And D, I didn't map somehow. I didn't get it get it connected up. Okay, I really do got to. I need to call it short. Um, or cut it short. I'm uh, running tight. I need to cook dinner and then head to this other sort of meeting. Um, but yeah, I appreciate. It. Go ahead. Yeah, maybe we can continue um, next weekend or something if you got some free time. In one or two weeks. We can talk about it uh, via email. I'll be doing this live stream again next weekend and maybe uh, sometime during the week. I've got a couple projects I'm working on. And uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, uh, you say it three times around this hour. All right. Well, let's tentatively aim for next Sunday. You and I can kick it on uh, this live stream and maybe do some you know, more music programming. And uh, level two um, says that they can fix this diagram if I upload it to GitHub. Okay, I will do that. I'll, level two, I'll put this diagram as it stands. I'll commit it to GitHub, and then pull requests is eagerly accepted. Thank you very much for all the help you've already given uh, to help this project go forward. I'll also um, commit this code as it, it's working now, and it's fairly readable. I'll, Go ahead and delete the commented out code. I'll do that offline. But um, yeah, I don't really have a way to f follow up offline with you, level two. So if you can check the GitHub repository uh, in the next maybe a couple of hours, it should be ready or the it'll be ready by tomorrow. And I'll look into sort of a, some kind of a chat where we can have um, a record of the discussions and links and things like that later on. Thanks for your feedback on that. Yeah, Discord, I'll check out Discord. Uh, do Discord. Okay, yeah, it's a pretty popular one. Okay, well, cool. Thanks, for, um, Mike and Level 2 for hanging out and anybody else on, on Twitch or if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I'll try to answer any questions or comments uh, promptly. We're open to suggestions and pull requests on GitHub are also welcome as just are uh, any other ideas you have. Uh, so this is on uh, github.com slash briley slash tonnets. We might end up in uh, renaming this project now that we're changing scope and uh, incorporating other geometrical representations of music. Um, yep, it's a living project, so to speak. Okay, well, thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.